It's we missed right? you. I was in Alabama for the last two weeks. I was doing some stuff with the University of Alabama, mm -hmm. uh, working with their wellness program around the whole state, trying to give back around and defeating the stigma of mental illness and substance right. abuse. So it was worthwhile to be away from you. But now we're back, and we were Listen. talking about the University of Alabama. What we got? We got a, got a quarterback from the University of Alabama yes, in the Super Bowl. And this is really special. You guys have heard me on the show talk about Jalen Hurts and how I knew when he was drafted that, that Carson Wentz wasn't long for this job mm. because he just outworks everybody. And we've heard that over and over and over again. I'm going to show you a few plays from the NFC Championship that illustrate that a little bit and some of the ways he's going to get it done in the Super Bowl. He's probably one of the coolest guys in the world, too. I've heard He's you guys talk so about that. so cool, right? All right, third down play here, all right? A.J. Brown on the perimeter. They brought, they got zero look here. They're going to bring everybody. But Fred Warner's going to try to trick him a little bit. Acts like he's blitzing, pops out, and thinks he's going to get right underneath the slant. Does a pretty good job. But the way that Jalen Hurts is able to use his body and get outside and use his feet to make this throw, watch this. Throws it right behind his head, and A.J. Brown's able, able to go down and pick it up. Jalen Hurts does such a great job with his feet, not only running the football, but his ability to get into position to throw it well. I think that's a bigger part of all this. This will happen ultimately on the fourth down play we're going to look at next. Got to find that window, right? Got to find that window. And then in this instance, it's really hard to roll to your left. This is where Devontae Smith is, all right? They're going to play coverage on him. They do a tremendous job of manning everybody up. No one's open. So he's got to bail out, and it's always difficult for a right-handed quarterback to bail left because you got to flip those hips and turn it. He does a really great job getting outside. Hand goes up as he turns up the field on a scramble drill. Devontae Smith is really good at this. They have a relationship, of course, from their time at Alabama. And he throws his hand up, and he puts it perfectly where you need to. What a great catch. It was a catch. Catch. It counted as a catch. It's a catch. Niners fans, it was a catch. I mean, you got it. it's a catch on the stat line, isn't it? It was in the script. It was in the script, everybody. <laughs> All right. Good call, buddy. All right. Uh, we got another opportunity here to show his uh, legs. This is great because you got the big wide receiver doing a great job out on the perimeter. He didn't catch the ball much. Only like 121 yards passing. And watch Jason Kelsey. Oh, yeah. I mean, just dominating. I've never seen a guy just, I mean, he looks like a tight end playing center, okay? He gets out. He just moves people. I mean, he pushes him. That's like from the movie Blindside, where he guy carries the guy off the, the field and dumps lot. him down into the parking <laughs> lot. That's exactly what it is. I don't want to see him get hits like this, necessarily. You know, he understands it. He gets a shot in the back right here at the end. You know, they're not very happy about it. As long as he can stay away from some of those hits. Now, the man, the myth, the legend. Five consecutive years to the AFC Championship hosting three of which in the Super Bowl. Here's the fourth down play. Look how confused the defense is here. It's a great uh, job by Andy Reid of, of confusing them. They don't know where they are. He should go with the ball right here. There's a first down. But he knows he's got them confused. He knows he's got man-to-man -man coverage. And a mismatch with, Jay, with Travis Kelsey on somebody much smaller, mm. easy pass. This was a corner route. And he just knew he wasn't getting open. He plants his foot and comes back in. And Patrick Mahomes is just right on the money. Those two have a connection like... Like I've never seen before from a quarterback. In his he had the down. easier option. That is interesting. Yeah, he did. Wide open for a first down. Just first down, boom. And I'm sure Andy Reid afterwards was like, hey, you know. <laughs> Don't be I'm not going to be mad about it. All right. Uh, <laughs> we got uh, uh, MSV or MVS on his, on his route here. He, he makes it work. Now watch him move in the pocket with that bum ankle. I've had high ankle sprains, okay? It's difficult to push off of him. He has to push off that right foot to throw that ball. It's just enough outstretched arms of Mike Hilton. And Mike Hilton is one of the best in the business. Still pissed he got away from Pittsburgh, but he's in Cincinnati now. They get the win there. Another big play, okay? Here's the one to end the game everybody talks about, all right? Dropping back. He probably could have maybe tossed it over here to his guy out in the backfield. Instead, he uses his feet, right? He's not going to risk throwing the ball and maybe uh, him falling short of the first, uh, first, line, first down marker. Instead, he runs. Watch him this guy right here, he has to stay there because of this wide receiver. If he throws it there, he runs up and makes the tackle. Instead, he runs with the football, ultimately gets a block, and unfortunately, just outside. Now, what was your reaction, everybody, when you saw it on TV? I was watching it with my wife. Immediately when I saw him pushed, I knew it was a flag. What was your immediate reaction? It's a flag, and that's why it was a flag. There was no subjective nature to it. The flag gives him 15 yards. Kansas City wins the football game. This dude is special. He is fun to watch. I got a great opportunity back in the day to mentor him at the Combine, and I knew that, I mean, I didn't know he was going to go to three Super Bowls in his first five years as a starter, but I knew he was a special player. 
just like I knew Jalen Hurts was too. So it's exciting to see this game, especially with two black quarterbacks starting an NFL Super Bowl for the first time ever. It's awesome. Talented, cool guys. I can't get over the fact that both of them are just awesome dudes. No, no doubt about it. And that first play you showed from Jalen Hurts was so impressive to me because the 49ers are coming with an all-out blitz. And for Fred Warner, he's going for as far as, all right, the blitz is set free. Somebody popped to me. So now he's popping out late. So for Jalen Hurts, that's very tough for a quarterback because you don't expect that. And he's still able to put that ball where only A.J. Well, Brown can catch it. I also think by him rolling to the right, it, it made Fred Warner go that left yes. way there because he kept moving that way and then he threw back across his body. When you know you have zero coverage, you don't have, you know you don't have another defender coming into the picture, you can be more risky with your throw over the middle like that. So really smart, great job by both quarterbacks to get him to a Super Bowl. The NFL brought you in in 2017 to the Combine to speak with the quarterbacks. You've got, obviously, Trubisky and Watson, and then there's this kid Mahomes. What was your first impression? Not the loudest voice, not the most uh, orthodox quarterback voice. What was your thought of Mahomes when you first laid eyes on him? Well, it's not, not an overly impressive. I had a picture I wanted to bring you guys, him and I standing next to each other, but I make most people look small. I get that. But he looked kind of small to me, you know? But there is something about a room full of alphas, which all quarterbacks are. Everybody in that room's are, rooms are. Nathan Peterman was one of the main guys in that room that really was a leader. And then you had Trubisky, you had Deshaun Watson, and you had Patrick Mahomes. All of those guys kind of became the leaders of the quarterbacks at the combine, and you saw that really early. And what I also found is a lot of times I think he probably didn't know who I was necessarily, mm -hmm. or if he did, it may not have been the most um, popular uh, or flattering. positive things, yeah. flattering things, but he still asked a ton of questions. Mm. And it's always weird to me to see guys that have everything in front of them. Joe Burrow was the same way. I went down and spoke with Jordan Palmer's spot. Uh, Joe came in with a pen and just, these guys are just open for a bunch of knowledge. And it's, it's amazing because I wasn't that way. I thought I knew everything. And these guys are still sponges and want to get better mm. and want to know more. So, yeah, Brian, we, we, we so that. appreciate um, your insights because it comes with a wealth of knowledge in the NFL. And I know you wanted to speak on the unfortunate news that Will Selva told us about earlier, which is the passing of Bobby Bethart um, at the age of 86 yesterday. He was an executive all across the league in the Hall of Fame, but I know he affected your life personally. Well, of course he did, right? He, he gave me my dream. Mm -hmm. I remember when, when Bobby came to my little apartment in Pullman, Washington, uh, and sat down and I had to like kick out my roommate's girlfriend because she wanted to watch 90210 on the TV. I'm like, I got the general manager of the San Diego Chargers here. Please leave our apartment. And, she, and he was so kind and he sat there and he knew that I most likely was going to get the opportunity to be a Charger. And, and he wanted the best for me. Hmm. And so he gave me my dream. Unfortunately, I did not give him the same respect back. The way I behaved, everything like that. He's still a great general manager. I think he gets, I think he gets uh, saddled with the fact that he drafted me. No, stop. No. I think he does. I think he does. But everybody would have drafted me. Yes. So it's not the biggest issue thing there. I also am glad I didn't ever cost him the Hall of Fame. So this is, this is like a opportunity just to tell him thank you. Because I think uh, a, a lot of the time if I would have ran into him in the past when I wasn't in the right mindset, I probably would have said something I, I would regret. Mm. And so I'm glad I didn't um, because I, I certainly want, wouldn't want that as maybe his last mm. remaining memory of me. So wow. uh, really proud of him, the success he had. Some of those, those Washington teams. Four Super Bowls. The way he hid guys back in the day on the practice squad. Remember when you were in the <laughs> I mean, I mean, some of the great players that were back there that he got on the field ultimately Doug Williams uh, on that Super Bowl run Joe Gibbs I mean he's just an impressive man and he couldn't have been more in his element when he ended up in San Diego just this kind of laid-back surfer dude in a surfer town it was his dream job uh, he got to draft his first draft pick was Junior Seau mm -hmm. I mean that just that leads you to believe uh, what kind of man and what kind of football man he was. Mm. Well said. We appreciate that, Ryan. I know his family appreciates, I'm sure, the words that you had for him, the kind words especially. Um, all right, more Good Morning Football coming your way.